Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As is well known, in the field of EUV lithography machines, also known as extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, only one company globally possesses the capability for independent manufacturing and assembly, the Dutch company ASML. However, due to the extreme complexity of an EUV lithography machine, requiring hundreds of thousands of precision parts and weighing tens of tons or more, ASML must source components from countries worldwide including the United States. Under this backdrop, ASML is essentially in the hands of the United States. If it doesn't comply with U.S. demands, it could face sanctions, suppression, or even being strangled like Huawei. Therefore, in recent years, ASML has played the role of a pawn in the US-China tech war, used to suppress China. ASML faces numerous restrictions in its supply of lithography machines to the Chinese market. Although forced to choose between two options, ASML's position in the global lithography machine industry remains solid, especially in the EUV lithography machine sector. The long-standing supply shortage has allowed ASML to maintain a decades-long monopoly in this field, even forcing U.S. tech giant Intel to wait in vain. It controls over 90% of the EUV lithography machine market, wielding absolute power. However, this era of easy dominance may be coming to an end, as the U.S. has intervened, potentially backfiring on ASML. Recently, the U.S. government announced a $150 million investment in Xlite, a semiconductor startup, focusing on lithography equipment technology. This marks the first time the U.S. has directly participated in the competition for lithography machine technology through equity investment. This $150 million is allocated under the CHIP and Science Act, approved by Trump, making the U.S. the top shareholder in a company a move of great significance. This can be understood as a direct confrontation between China and the Netherlands in the future competition between ASML and Xlite. ASML, which has always had to defer to the US in the US-China technological rivalry, is now facing a direct confrontation. Will it compromise? Will it surrender? Both are possible. Of course, Xlite is different from ASML. It cannot manufacture complete lithography machines. Xlite is targeting a crucial lithography technology, the light source. EUV lithography is technically challenging, and its difficulty lies in the light source technology. Xlite has proposed a new technological path to circumvent ASML's technological monopoly, particle accelerator technology. Theoretically, Xlite believes that by building a large-scale particle accelerator drive device, high-energy electron beams can excite extreme ultraviolet photons. Once this free electron laser technology is implemented, it can reduce wafer processing costs by at least 30%, thus providing a more efficient and stable light source for lithography machines, enabling advanced process technologies at 3 nanometers and below. Some may wonder 
What kind of company is Xlite? Why is the US government supporting it? The current executive chairman of this company is Pat Gielsinger. Does that name sound familiar? That's right, he's the former CEO of NVIDIA. Makes sense now, doesn't it? Therefore, in global technological competition, there are no permanent friends or enemies, and monopolies are not sustainable. Without core technologies and continuous innovation, there's a possibility of being overtaken. It's foreseeable that the global semiconductor industry will undergo a complete reshuffle. In short, ASML of the Netherlands monopolized EUV lithography machines for decades, but faces technological disruption due to US support for the emerging Xlite. This company, led by the former CEO of NVIDIA, uses particle accelerator technology to directly address the pain points of light sources, potentially reshaping the semiconductor industry landscape. The global chip hegemony battle has entered a new round. For the past few decades, the logic of globalization has been comparative advantage. Whoever is good at something does it and everyone maximizes efficiency through international division of labor. However, this model has a fatal flaw. Once geopolitical risks rise, the supply chain system can be transformed into a weapon. The US is using chips to strangle China. China is retaliating with rare earths, and Europe caught in the middle between the US and China, is targeting Nixperia. These are typical examples of the weaponization of supply chains. This game is not just about the survival of Nixperia, but a major issue concerning the protection of China's overseas assets, the direction of Sino-European relations, and the reshaping of the global supply chain landscape. Therefore, China must demonstrate sufficient resolve and means to make those who attempt to seize Chinese assets pay the price, and to make those countries that are straddling the fence between the US and China realize the true situation.